I just bought the Case Revolution Magnetic Filter System. And uh, I'm not, in this video, I'm not going to go into what it is, what it does, why you'd want it, how to use it. That's, there are plenty of videos on YouTube about that. But I, what I will do is I will link in the description below, I will link to one of the videos from Case that'll, that'll give you a basic idea if you want to go over and look at that. But I'm going to assume that you know what they are, you know how they work. You either know that you already want to buy them or you already have them, but want to figure out what's the optimal way to set up a multi-lens system to be able to use these. And I'm going to kind of approach it in, in two ways. One is to talk just about the filter system itself, but then I'm going to throw in something else that I bought separate, which sounds like a good idea, but we'll see in practice if it'll actually work out to be worthwhile, is this, this, uh, magnetic, this magnetic lens hood. So I can basically not deal with bayonet mounting. So not only avoiding screwing filters or adapters from one lens to another, but avoiding dealing with bayonet mount, you know, bayonet mount um, lens hoods. Uh, that's a little bit picky, and if that turns out not to be very useful, okay. So I spent a little money there that I didn't that I didn't have to, but I figured I would give it a try because it could be a nice you know, anything that speeds up the process and take you know takes distractions away from the f photographic process. I think is a good thing. So anyway, but you know bayonet mount mountain lenses, uh, bayonet mount lens hoods aren't the, aren't the end of the world, but uh, I'll just throw this in there to see if you think it might be a benefit. <laughs> So anyway, so I got three lenses and what I do, not that this really matters much, but in terms of the questions here, what I do and many purists I'm sure among us will disagree is I leave a, I leave a UV filter on my lenses at all times because I'd, I'd rather give up some theoretical, um, theoretical image quality. I'd rather give that up for full time protection of my front element. Uh, I've been known to forget to put my lens cap on more than a few times when I put this in my bag and I'm, I'm you know, I'm exposing my, uh, my front element to damage. So I leave them on all the time. So one question is, well, will this system work with that? And yeah, the, the, the obvious simple answer is yes, because most screw on filters will also have a, an internal thread. This happens to be, these happen to be 77 millimeter, right? So the filters that I use all have internal threads. So it, it just basically moves the thread from the body of, the, of the, the, the barrel of the lens out to, you know, just out to the edge of the filter. So, so that really doesn't change anything because you still have your 77 millimeter thread. But then when you get into the adapters and then, and then the lens hood and stuff like that, you start to maybe get some questions as to which adapter should I use and, and why. So, <clears throat> So that you know, this this, uh, this polarizer is out of the is out of the kit. I'm just going to use it for demonstration purposes. This is the case that that it comes in. They're in there, color coded, and um, one of the nice things somebody I thought somebody had complained that they wish it had a belt loop. Well, it does. So now you can put it on your belt and you can holster your filters pretty easily uh, with that. All right, so let me talk about the two adapters. There are two adapters that it comes with, and one of them is pretty new. This one, this one, this is the inlaid adapter, and this is the standard adapter. And they just came out with this one, and uh, you know, I, the benefits of one over the other, just from watching the videos, wasn't clear. They said something about with, with this one, with the inlaid one, you can use your existing lens cap which led me to believe that with the regular one, you couldn't use your existing lens cap. But they, they give you one with the kit. I think it was the Pro ND kit or something. They give you one magnetic lens cap, which slaps on there just like a filter. It's pretty nice. Now it's not as hard, I mean, it's a good strong magnet, but when this is obviously screwed onto a lens, it comes off pretty easily. You'll see that later. So I wasn't sure which one to use. Now the inlaid one, this one's a little bit finicky, but the inlaid one, which is very thin, and the design of it means that when you screw it into either the filter, your filter or the barrel of your lens, if you don't use a filter, when you screw it in there, 
it screws down far enough that it leaves some of your 77 millimeter threads exposed, which means that's how you can use your existing lens cap. That's how you can screw other things on there if you decided that you wanted to stack a filter that you have, a screw-on filter that you have, you can actually screw it on with this thing still being still being in there. But once this is in there, obviously your magnetic filters, your magnetic filters will just it, you know magnetically adhere right to that. Now, when I when I got the kit, sometimes like I said, you got to buy you got to buy it just to see exactly what it'll you know what it'll do. So this is the regular ring. Now it turns out the regular ring has threads in there too. So your 77 millimeter thread is carried through this, this ring as well. So in one case, you're exposing the existing 77 millimeter threads out to whatever you want to add on. And in this case, this is extending the, the, set, the same 77 millimeter thread. And so you, you'd basically be screwing it onto this adapter. So what's the difference? Well, let me screw this on here. So what's the difference? I, from what I can tell, I'll, I'll put this one on in a minute, is this one, this knurled ring that you can see here is an extra sixteenth of an inch or something sticking out from the, either the barrel of the lens or out from, in this case, the filter that I have on there. So you're adding a little length. Some people get, you know, some people get um, concerned about the further out you start stacking things, the more chance of vignetting you're going to get, especially on very, very wide lenses. So I think on, you know, this lens 16 to 35, I, don't know, I doubt, I doubt this is going to add a, a risk of vignetting, but I, but I guess we'll see. But if I am concerned about that, what I can do is I can use, just leave that there for now. I can, I can use the inlay ring. I, this, to me, this is probably the only benefit of the inlay ring is that it, since it recesses in there and you, and whatever you add on is using the, is using the threads from the barrel of your lens, you're not losing, you're not adding any depth to your, to your lens barrel. So the way they suggest that you install this is put a filter on it. So you have something to grab and then just screw it on like a regular filter, right? And you do this, the idea is you have enough adapter rings and they sell them. That's one of the, they sell adapter rings, um, both kinds. Well, the, the inlay ring is new and they are not available. I think they're going to be available in about a month, but, um, you screw you do this once because it, it can be a little bit finicky to get the thing out. So you get the thread started, but of course, once it starts to get tight in there, you're just spinning the filter because it's mag it's held on by magnetism. So you pop the filter off. The inlay ring is in there. It's not adding anything. It's not adding anything to the length of the barrel. But then they give you this little this little tool here where you put you put it into the notches. There's these two notches. You put it into these two notches, and you use that to kind of torque it down, tighten it up. They really, my one beef is that they should have made this out of, out of metal because when you try to take it off, uh, it's, it flexes too much. Okay. So now these two lenses are magnetically, are magnetically, um, enabled so that they, they can, they can accept a filter. Now you just move the filter to there if you want and, um, lens cap. So now I'll just demonstrate if you can, if you can see, if I try to line up the filters, you can see that that ring adds that extra six, the, the standard ring adds that extra 16 inch of an, of a 16th inch, 16th of an inch of depth to the barrel. Um, this one will be easy to get off. Of course, it's taking my filter off with it, which will, you know, which will happen. But the idea is that, is that you really, you know, you really only want to do this once. And then unless you break the filter and then you got to get the ring out. But the idea is 
I'm set. I don't have to change anything because any filter that I want to use just plops right on top. Now let me bring this thing into the picture. This thing comes in two parts. The lens hood itself, that's fully extended and that's fully collapsed. And then there's a mid ground where you can just bring that part out, depending upon how wide your lens is. And then you need this adapter ring in order to, for this thing to actually slap onto. So you gotta, they give you one of these with this lens hood, you can buy additional ones. And then what you can do is you can screw this onto your lens And the interesting thing about this is because it's, it's also a magnetic adapter. So it's magnetic for this, for the lens hood, right? Pops right on, pops right off. And I'll tell you why I, I think that could be handy or why I wanted it to be handy. But also it accepts the filters. So you don't even have to put one of these adapters underneath it. It acts as an adapter for both filters and the lens hood. I think it's pretty slick. So if I don't want to bother with the lens hood, I have to decide between whether I want to get an inlay adapter for this, because I have these two covered, unless I want to mold the same, then I buy two of whatever. But these two are covered. I need something magnetic for this. Um, if, I didn't have the if I didn't have the lens hood, I'd either buy another inlay or regular adapter, and then they're all magnetically enabled, and I'm good to go for filters. But if I want to use this, I have to buy two more of these for these two lenses. But then I don't even need the adapters because this acts as an adapter. So um, the downside to this thing is if this stays on your lens, which would be the idea, my idea anyway, you know, you, this is on your lens all the time. Is that okay? You know, in and out of your bag, takes up a little extra room. We'll see how it is in practice, but I'm, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try at least living with it on one lens for a while. Now, let me say the reason why I thought of this and the reason why it might actually not work is because I find, I find that the hardest part of filter changing is when I'm using this lens. Either filter changing or even adjusting the circular polarizer because you're reaching in this, in here, right? And you're behind the camera and you're reaching around and you know, you're trying to turn it and look through the viewfinder and it's, it's really, so you end up having to take this off, adjusting your filter, putting this back on, hoping it doesn't move. It's not the end of the world, you know, I, you probably don't even have to consider this um, because if you don't mind taking this thing on and off, finding a place to set it down, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but I just thought it would be kind of neat to be able to pop this off and then, you know, work the, work the circular polarizer and then pop this thing back on. The reason why the situation where I would use it most is a situation where it might not work is because obviously these are very different lens hoods. And uh, Canon, I'm sure Canon designed this lens hood to be as deep and as narrow as it is for a good reason. So with this on there, it may not go, do a good enough job controlling lens flare. So in that case, what have I, what have I bought? I've bought this for these two lenses which is really not that hard to reach in to the bayonet mount and uh, adjust your polarizer. I mean, it's a little bit of a hassle, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it is when I, when I look, get it in the field. But those are the choices at this point. It's either, it's either buy two more adapters of one, of one kind or, an, uh, 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 yeah, uh, one more adapter rather of one kind or another. Okay, I want to record an addendum for a couple things that I that happened and I learned 
uh, since the making of the main video. First thing I want to say is, the, as I mentioned, I think in the main in the in the intro titles, the, the nylon tool that they give you to remove the inlay ring snapped on me in the middle, as I was trying to remove it in order to remake the video from scratch, you know, start from scratch. Now, in their defense, I probably use that more times than most people would. Typically, you, you know, you put the thing in and then hopefully just leave it, right? That's kind of, I think that's kind of the point. And the only time you'd have to remove it, if you're using a filter and you break your filter, uh, that's, that's my view on it. Um, so I, I probably used it more than they intended, but I email them and see if they'll send me, send me another replacement or two. Um, <clears throat> so that's why I couldn't remake the video because I can't get this out now. And the other thing I want to say in their defense is I said maybe they should make it out of aluminum. I think uh, it's pretty obvious now. I think they made it out of nylon because if you slip, you run the risk with a metal to, of scratching your filter or your, or your front element. So nylon probably is the right choice. Maybe there's a stronger material that's non-marring. I don't know. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to say is about the lens caps. This ring, which is made for the lens hood, if you do decide to go with leaving these on any or all of your lenses, you're going to have to buy these. You're going to have to buy as many of these as you have these, or extras or whatever, right? Because this is the only lens cap that's really going to work, at least as far as I can see. This will not clamp onto here. This, this lens cap won't work. So doesn't have the threads or whatever to grab onto. So you're going to have to buy enough of these for as many of these. All right, so that's that. Now with this, with the inlay ring in there, like I said, it leaves some threads exposed. So you're able to install your original lens cap. That's one of the selling points. Problem I see is, well, there's two problems. Let me just say, I read this morning that somebody commented that they have a certain lens and when the inlay ring goes in, there, there are no threads exposed and he can't use his cap. So they responded that they're now discovering that there are some lenses that the inlay ring will not let you use your existing lens cap. So they're working up a list of compatible lenses. So keep that in mind. But even with this lens, even though there are threads exposed, there are far fewer threads exposed, so it's not gripping as many threads. So it, it, in theory, it kind of works, right? But I think, I think it's too easy to dislodge because if you look, if you, if you look closely, I'm not sure if, I can, if I'll be able to show it, but if you look closely, there's a, there's a gap between the lens cap and, and the filter, or if you don't use a filter, it would be your lens body, uh, probably. I'm assuming the, the threads are as deep on my filter as they are on my lens body uh, barrel. Um, but I, I think you, I may find as I put this in, I put this in my bag this way. As I put it in and out, it might be too easy to like for that thing to dislodge. Uh, you know, if it's only coming in and out of the bag, it's not the end of the world, I guess, because you're you're going to be taking it off anyway. But um, but I don't know. Uh, it's something we'll have to see. It's it's a potential concern. I won't say for sure that it's a concern. Last thing I want to mention is. I have a couple of other lenses. One is a macro lens, which is a uh, 67 millimeter uh, filter size. And I have another big zoom lens, which is a much larger uh, 80 something millimeter. So <clears throat> I'm choosing not to outfit these for filters because I don't think I'll use neutral density or polarizer filter on a macro lens because typically you're already struggling to get enough light into it. But if I do, I can always get a step up ring from 67 to 77, and you can always, stepping up is always okay, and then I'd be able to, to mount filters on there if I want. So that's number one. As far as the other, as far as the other uh, lens goes, it's a very long zoom lens, and that one, you know, I, I can't get a step down ring, so I would have to have gone for the largest common denominator if I wanted to be able to outfit that with filters. And since that's so large, I really don't want to drag all of these other lenses into such a, you know, all step up rings for that huge size and then dealing with a bigger, you know, I just decided I'm leaving that out because I use that 
for wildlife photography or action photography. Not the kind of stuff that I would need, that I, I don't think I would need any, again, it's a slow enough lens that I'm already struggling to get, to get light in there. So <clears throat> that's the story. This macro won't, won't be outfitted and the zoom won't be either, but my other three uh, will.